we uh we have two punters in, in camp, which is kind of a kind of a, a thing that maybe I guess a lot of people weren't expecting when y'all had to cut down to eighty. What do you what do you like about about Gillikin and what what is uh um you know having having a, a guy to to give Thomas and and Will some rest whenever they need it? I mean, what, what does that do for you? Yeah, you know I'll tell you what, Luke. It's a good question. You know the 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 thought process going into it is. You know, when you're, you know, when you're in preseason like this, and obviously when we first signed Blake, we weren't aware we weren't going to have preseason games and all that. So, you know, there was certainly a, uh, you know, different thought process when we first started. But to have a guy to be able to give us a lot of different reps, you know, we can do our punt period every day. We can do a kickoff period every day. You know, most people probably wouldn't realize that, you know, you don't want to really punt your punter and kick your kicker every day. Think, think of a kicker and a punter as kind of like a starting pitcher. You know, they have, their, they have their on day and then they have their work days, they have their off days. And to be able to have a guy that can do all three, uh, you know, in, with us here in preseason, uh, you know, it allows us to practice a little bit differently. Um, that's number one. Number two, uh, we're talking about a good player, a guy that can do and you know, did a lot of good things in college. And then, and then thirdly, you know, we had some background. You know, Phil Galliano obviously was at Penn State with Blake and, uh, you know, had a little background on the player. And, and so – you know, we felt really comfortable. It can, uh, you know, we could take more advantage of some of the off days. Here's a guy that can, you know, really he's a jack of all trades. He can punt, he can kick off, he's a good holder. Um, and so we can get a lot of group work. And, you know, for example, if it's a day where Timo is down, we can still have a punt period. We can still have him go in there and hold field goals, so on and so forth. And, and not to mention that he's doing a good job as well. So all those factors kind of played into it. And uh, I think having, having an extra leg, I've always been a big fan of having an extra leg this time of year for those Next question's from Larry Holder. Larry? Hey, Darren, a couple questions here. Uh, one, uh, how live will you go with special teams drills in practice since there are no games uh, to really gauge upon? And then how much does uh, training camp really take away from throwing Taysom Hill into special teams, and how do you balance that dynamic? Yeah, sure. I'll, I'll answer the first part. You know, I, I, I personally, maybe I'm selfish and a little biased, but I think it, I think these no preseason season games affect special teams the most. Um, right. You know, I think because the evaluation of the younger players, you know, on a team like ours where maybe you have a veteran team where you're trying to really find those last, let's call it, you know, 45 to 53, player 45 to 53. Uh, a lot of times, and, you know, Coach mentioned the other day in the team meeting, Coach Payton said, hey, we don't have those preseason games where you can go out and block a punt. Or like Deontay last year, return a punt for a touchdown. And so – we're trying to create as many competitive settings in practice as we can. And so uh, I'll give you an example. The other day we did a, a quote unquote live punt versus punt return and drill. We're in the kind of the gunners versus the jammers, the inside guys. And, you know, it might not be 11 on 11. It might be more of a one-on-one -on -one or, but we're trying to create as many of those quote unquote live situations as we can. Maybe it's not bringing the ball carrier to the ground. It's everything else. It's full speed. It's full cover. Um, and so, you know, obviously player safety, keeping player safety in mind as well, but, but we really have to. We have to set up competitive situations to, to, to be able to evaluate these players. And, you know, let's be honest, a lot of these rookies have never done these jobs before. You know, the, the punt game is totally different in college. Even if they were on the punt team, the, the, the rules and everything else, it's a really different play. And so seeing a lot of these guys do things for the first time in these live settings is going to be important, uh, you know, for those, for, for those rookies. You know, again, it's different for guys that have done it before. Even guys coming from other teams, we have a good background on a lot of those players. Um, but for those rookies, man, I'll tell you, it's, it's, it's really, really important. The second part of the question with Taysom, you know, there's always a, del a delicate balance with, with a player like that. He's, he's, a, he's kind of a unicorn because, you know, he's taking snaps at quarterback and, he's, and he can do so many different things. And so uh, I think the benefit we have going into this year, you know, last year was my first year trying to get, you know, get to know him a little bit and, and the different roles he was going to play. I think now that we're kind of in act two, if you will, with me, um, you know, I, I have a really defined role in my head and so does Coach Payne of what, you know, what Taysom can do. And so, you know, maybe he's not getting as much practice at it uh, or at different things, but we're still, he's still there. He's still in the means. He's still repping things. And uh, again, a lot, and maybe some of those younger guys are taking some of those reps away so we can evaluate some of those guys. So it's definitely a delicate balance. I think the more we go closer to game one, the more we, you know, we put on his plate. But, you know, at, early on here, I think it's good that, We've kind of he know, he's been through the cycle. He knows what to expect, and same thing for me. Next questions from Amos Morale. Amos. 
Yeah, uh, kind of following along those lines, uh, you mentioned the delicate balance and trying to create these live situations in practice because of no preseason games. Does that affect the the personnel you get to use in practice? Because, you know, you, you kind of got to be careful. And also, you know, you are trying to see more live situations. You know, you know, it's, it's a really good question because, again, I'm, I'm probably the biased answer and the, uh, the selfish answer. I think going from 90 to 80 players, is, it really affects the special teams coach as well because usually those 10 players that, you know, we, we just, you know, had to release getting down to 80, a lot of those guys were trying to make the team on special teams. And so you're trying to evaluate those guys. So knocking down from 90 to 80 does affect the way you practice for sure. You know, maybe you should rep – for example, we would rep three groups and instead we're repping two. Um, and so it definitely 100% affects the way we practice, no question about it. Um, on, the, on the flip side of the coin, it's a benefit to the guys that are here. We're able to evaluate them a little bit better. But again, you got to be smart on the way you practice. You know, we can't go out and practice live reps every time. We can't have a full, full cover uh, of every kickoff. So we got to kind of shorten the field, do some individual drills, some technique work. And so that's, you know, it's kind of created a new, a new kind of process for us as special teams coaches. But again, I would say it's a, it's a double-edged sword. It's, 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 you have to change the way you practice, but at the same time, the guys that are here are getting good quality work. Maybe the quantity, not as much. Next one's from Catherine Terrell. Kat? I was curious, with some of these unknown guys, how do you, uh, Gunner for a specific example, how do you choose – your gunners is it a pure speed thing or is there some other quality that kind of makes you want to try them out there you know what Catherine I, I've had a bunch of different uh body types in my, in my career that go out there you know I've had small guys bigger guys I mean certainly speed is a factor usually um if you're if you don't have you know high-end speed it's usually now you're looking for a bigger body it's going to be able to defeat blocks uh I would say the number one factor is the mentality going out there and, and knowing that you know, you're going to be the first guy down the field and draw a lot of attention and draw blocks. You know, I could talk about the gunner play for a long time because it's something I'm passionate about because we, t we spend a lot of time working on technique. There's a lot of rules that people maybe not be aware of with the sideline and staying in bounds, running out of bounds, when you can go out of bounds, using the sideline, how you have to re-enter the field. Uh, that guy has to not only play at a high, high speed, there's a lot of thought process that goes into that position as well. And so, you know, typically when you look through the NFL, you see a lot of defensive backs, a lot of wide receivers, some running backs. Usually your skill position guys are your gunners out there. But, you know, when you, when you, when you try to break down our practices, you know, and I mentioned not being able to cover full field every time just from, a, from a, a realistic standpoint. A lot of times we'll work just a line of scrimmage technique. It might be, um, you know, your hand placement. It might be just your first step uh, working the sideline, things like that. And so, you know, there's a lot that goes into it. It's not only body types. There's a lot, a lot of coaching that goes into that, into that as well. Dad, I think we lost your video. Oh, there we go. I'm back. Right, next one's from Luke Johnson. Luke. Darren, this is going to kind of require a, a little bit of a, a leap, uh, an assumption <laughs> on my part, on my part, but uh, I, I'm assuming that, that you're getting some, some work with Joe Bocci. Um, I'm just curious what your, uh, what your early impressions of him are. That's definitely not a leap. Come on, I thought, I thought there was going to be a much bigger leap than that. Hey, listen, if you're an undrafted linebacker in this league, you have to make the team on special teams. That's, that's, not, that's not a secret. So, you know, I think, it, I think that, um, you know, all those guys, you know, we have a young linebacker group. You know, you have – you got some guys that, uh, you know, first and second year players in that group. And so it's going to be one of the battles that, to be honest with you, as we move forward here that I'm really keeping a, a, an eye on. And Joe, Joe's right in the mix. You know, Joe – was a very, very um, productive defensive player in college. A lot of, a lot of ball production, a lot of tackles, always around the football. The one thing that, you know, he's a player I watched as a possible late round uh, guy and a free agent. And, and the one thing that stuck out to me all the time was how well he tackled. And it was a good open field tackler, always around the ball. Uh, and I think, if I'm not mistaken, if he, if he didn't lead the Big Ten, he was certainly up there in the Big Ten. Uh, you can correct me on my stats, but he was up there in the Big Ten in total tackles. And so he's a guy that kind of, you know, with, with the rest of that linebacker group that um, is definitely going to be in a competitive situation, but he's right in there in the mix. He's working on every single, every single special team right now. And, uh, you know, so far, obviously only first couple days in pads, but so far so good with Joe. 